Hi everyone, thanks so much for joining me again and I just want to firstly say thanks so much for um, the support you gave me on my last video. I was really blown away by the, the awesome comments. I'm glad it uh, was a benefit to you guys and you enjoyed the video. Um, it, there will be a link at the end of this video. You can go watch it if you haven't seen it and I would appreciate the support. And yeah, please subscribe and hit those like buttons and I'll keep making videos. And yeah, so today we've got the Fuji X-H1. Uh, awesome news. Uh, this is a, a new direction for Fujifilm. Uh, even though a lot of the camera is very similar to what we've seen before in the X-T2, this is a clear indication that Fuji is moving in a different direction, I'd say primarily for videographers and for those doing sport shooting or anything that's high paced. Uh, I will say if you're looking to upgrade from an X-T2, this is certainly an upgrade. Uh, I've used it for a very short time. I've only used it for half of a day. I've only got it short time. I've got to hand it back to Fuji. They've got to give it to someone else. There's only two or three bodies in South Africa at the moment, and they're going from place to place, showing the cameras as many people as possible. Cool new specs on the camera. Uh, very quickly, we got the in-body stabilization. Very cool. A lot of people have been asking for this. This has been one of the, the number one things, and I think this is going to put some other camera manufacturers in trouble, to be perfectly honest because this is the toss-up. People went for the in-body stabilization but lost all the benefits of Fuji. Now Fuji's offering it all. So it's gonna be amazing for those who are looking for that. Uh, combined with that is the improved autofocus. Um, I won't get into all of that now, but it definitely has improved. They've improved uh, the viewfinder. Uh, it's a bigger unit on top, which you'll notice. That's a definite improvement. They've added the Eterna color profile, which I think has been designed for video, but obviously can still be used for stills. Uh, welcomed, I believe. Uh, I haven't had much time to do video on the camera, um, it, but it does offer now 1080 at 120p, which is also something people have been asking for. And uh, very importantly, actually, it offers F-Log recorded directly to ST, SD card. So huge. Um, you know, before you had to have an external drive, now you can do it directly onto it. So they really are stepping up their game in video. And with the compact size, uh, I think a lot of people are going to be going for this camera from a video perspective. Amazing lenses, amazing quality not even having to lug around massive gear, even though this camera is slightly bigger or a bit bigger than the X-T2, these are welcome features definitely. In the short time I had the camera, I figured I'd put it through its paces and what it's actually designed to do. Um, so I wasn't able to find something or fan very quickly that would give me that high pace. So I took my dog Cody down to the beach, just snapped a few of him running towards me. And that was the key because obviously the X-T2 can track left to right. A lot of cameras can track left to right. That's not really a good representation of autofocus. It's when a high pace subject moves towards you directly. And if you're shooting wide open like f2.8 because in a lot of situations people are using in low light situations stadiums uh, around tracks where they might have to shoot wide open you want to know that you get autofocus accurately moving towards you and it, it did a perfectly good job i mean obviously not every shot was in focus but in those situations with my dog is very quick is uh it's very difficult to get every shot, but most of the shots, a good 80, 90% were hit, hit rates, moving directly towards me, nice and sharp, um, very responsive. And that's the one thing you'll notice when you pick up this camera and use it for the first time, is that, uh, or what happened to me at least, was when I picked the camera up and I just pushed the autofocus button down, when I pushed it down, it took a photograph. That actual uh, sensitivity on the autofocus is so much more responsive than the X-T2. It's actually quite, uh, quite incredible it's the first thing you'll notice is literally you, you you're going to accidentally take a photograph because uh, it focuses that quickly and it's so sensitive and the difference between fo focusing and actually taking the photograph has been reduced uh, so you'll have to get used to it you, you'll, you'll adapt pretty quickly in, in a very short time i was able to get used to that responsiveness and um, yeah definitely a step up from the xt2 hugely so all right some of the specifications on the camera uh, it comes with the ibis the in-body stabilization and i believe it can get up to about 5.5 stops of stabilization, which is very impressive. However, it's not the same for every lens, and they have made note that that 5.5 is obtained, I think, only on the 35, 1.4, maybe another lens or two. I haven't got all the details yet, but it's not across the whole range. And then those lenses, like the 1024, the 1855, that come with the uh, stabilization in the lens, are also not going to give you the same results. I do believe you can use it in connection with it, but you're not going to get up to the 5.5 with those lenses. Um, so there are certain lenses giving different results, but overall, anywhere near five stops is incredible. Another spec uh, I'll bring up for you guys is the actual viewfinder. Uh, it has changed, it's slightly larger in size. The actual, the actual cup at the back is like the extended cup that you'd find on the X-T2, at least the accessory that you can buy for the X-T2. The extended cup, that looks like that's now standard on this body. And again, it's got the class leading um, LCD inside the viewfinder. 
apparently 3.69 3.69 million dots all right the color profile that they've added to the camera is called the turner um, and uh, that's a new addition it's not found on any of the other cameras I'm, I'm, I'm sure that'll be available through firmware update on the other bodies but this has been geared up i believe for video the camera now records at 200 megabits per second which is improved from the previous body a really welcome addition is the 1080 at 120p um, as well as the uh, ability to record uh, or f-log directly to sd card which wasn't present on the xt2 they are also offering a 400 percent dynamic range which kind of gives you leeway of around 12 stops autofocus is definitely a massive improvement but they've also included a flicker reduction mode on the camera um, which obviously helps with those people shooting in, in indoor sports environments things like that Obviously with the autofocus, phase detection had issues with uh, certain lenses using the tele teleconverter, like your 100 to 400 when you put on the tele teleconverter, you obviously your, uh, your minimum aperture changes, but they've increased that and they've, Im they've improved the ability for phase detection uh, from f8 to f11. The camera body has the same sensor as the X-T2. It's the 24.3 million pixel uh, CMOS Extron sensor, a CMOS 3 Extron sensor. So we know that the quality of the image is superior and um, that hasn't changed from the X-T2. Very cool feature which a lot of people have asked for is the touchscreen. Uh, similar to what you find on the GFX has now been added to this camera. So its folding positions are similar to the X-T2 and the GFX uh, but with the addition of the touch feature. Another feature which I still haven't kind of got used to is the top screen. Um, now I've spoken to people who love this and they love that about the GFX. Uh, I love the the X-T2 uh, compensation dial, that's just the way I shoot, especially when you're using auto ISO, you're setting your aperture, you're setting your minimum and maximum shutter speeds and all you're using is your compensation to deal with the changing in light, I always find very helpful in certain situations. You can still do that because you now have a button where you can engage and then turn the back uh, dial and you're going to be ad adjusting your exposure compensation, so no big, big deal. Um, so something I'd probably have to get used to, um, I think landscape shooters will benefit from seeing uh, information at the top of the camera even though you can still fold your screen back and see it there. I know video people, I've spoken to some, some video guys and girls, they think this is rad, you know, looking at the top of the camera at times is very, very helpful and uh, works the same way as a GFX. It's obviously negative lit, it's a black screen with the white writing when, the, when you haven't lit it up and in nighttime situations you hit the light button, it lights up with a white background and black writing so it does the reverse um, and that's permanently on when the the camera's off. On the dials are very similar at the top, obviously you're missing the compensation dial but you've now got the, you've got the ISO dial in the same area, you've got your functions below the ISO dial including your high frame rates and this is incredible as the X-T2 is uh, with the grip I think I might be mistaken it's 14, 14 frames a second but I might be wrong I need to double check that uh, and obviously your, your metering modes is the same underneath your uh, shutter speed. Function buttons are the same, your menu buttons are the same um, and the grip has the same features as what's found on the X-T2 grip, just the grip is now larger in size. Batteries are identical to X-T2, that's something I need to look at is how is this going to be impacting the, um, you know, with the camera demanding more power, what is this going to do to battery life? Because we know that the smaller battery, obviously to keep the camera compact, uh, that's one drawback of mirrorless in general, not just Fuji, is that the batteries don't last as long as DSLRs. But now that we've added the features, the extra features like the in-body stabilization uh, and in autofocus improvements, um, how are the batteries going to you know, do with these new features? We'll have to find out. Um, so yeah, exactly the same batteries as what's found on the X-T2, which is cool. So you can have two bodies, you can be running them simultaneously without having to get multiple battery setups. So that's a bonus. The second shoot that I did in the day was down at the small skate park down the road. Uh, I did a little informal skate park and the kids were happy for me to take some photos of them and yeah, very impressed. Again, I've kind of put it in, in the situations where I think this camera is going to be well suited. Feel love. 
sorry I wasn't able to have more time with this camera to give you a more uh, sort of detailed review, but next week Fujifilm is holding an event. Uh, I think it's, I think motocross riders are involved. I'm not 100% sure, but I'll certainly be there to film it and share it with you guys as well. I'm really excited to put it through its paces. Uh, just, just a, you know, the way I see this camera, uh, it's a different sort of direction for Fuji. It's certainly um, a step up from the X-T2. Uh, obviously, it may not be the step up every photographer needs, but if it's in your budget and you're looking at the X-T2, uh, the improvement in autofocus for a whole wide range of genres um, might be something to look at because um, I, I don't believe the cost is going to be massively bigger. I'm, I'm not sure of the numbers yet. I was told figures, but I was told not to mention them until it was all finalized. But there is going to be an increase in price from the X-T2, and um, it may be worthwhile if you're looking at the X-T2 to look at this camera. Uh, for those of you with the X-T2, um, you'd obviously have to evaluate what sort of photography you're doing, whether these improvements are there would obviously be a benefit to you. Um, but I'm very impressed. Uh, you know, They've obviously forked off in a totally different line, and I think this is obviously the start of a, a camera that's going to be um, very popular with certain type of shooters. And I think this camera will continue down that line, and I think the X-T2 will continue on its own line. So yeah, very exciting, very impressed with uh, Fujifilm. Keep keeping the ball going, uh, keep improving on certain things, and I think you know from a responsiveness uh, responsiveness with this camera, and obviously autofocus features improving which are always the worry for most people getting into mirrorless. You know, can it perform like a DSLR? There's been such huge improvements and this is no different to any of the other bodies that have come out. So very impressed. Thank you Fujifilm for sending this. I know this was very short and I, um, and I am looking forward to putting out more reviews about this camera going forward. Uh, thanks for your time guys. Please su subscribe. Sorry about the rush video. I had to get it out. And uh, yeah, take care, God bless and uh, hit the like button if you like it. Thanks so much.